this lunch panel today because future metrics, as you guys know, we've always been the fastest growing division of Market America. We are always that division that's bringing you the latest in science, the latest in technology, and the ever-growing health and wellness space, which we always said was going to be the next trillion dollar industry, and we're there. And when I started my own franchise uh, a little over 12 years ago, you know, and they had just started with Nutrametrics, things were very different. We didn't know, right? We just sort of walked into our primary care and said, hey, what do you think about wellness? And a lot of them were really grumpy about it, right? And, you know, I remember, Jane, you were drawing out oligomerous proanthocyanidin and trying to explain biochemistry and molecular structure. And today it's a little bit more personalized. It's more about the stories, the same stories that you're seeing on stage. The same story if you step around and heard from Larry Rogowski, who's always been a big deal in Nutrametrics as a provider and a Nutrametrics consultant. Um, it has always really led the way. I mean, and it's those personal stories that make a difference. So I'm excited to share these stories here today with you from our panel of mental health providers. I think this fits in really nicely too with the two new products that we came out with, with the fact that our Trim Cafe is not working here, it's working here. Did you see that diagram? And the fact that our Probiotic 10 now has a lot more mental health claims as well. I mean, these are two products that you could go to providers like we have here today and talk to them about it. But we want to just, you know, first hear from them to say, uh, who are you? What attracted you to Nutrametrics? How long have you been there? And what products are you using? And what are what's the landscape of your industry? Things that you would need to know when you're approaching mental health providers. So I'm going to let my panel introduce themselves real quickly. If you guys just want to say, Jonathan, we'll start with you. Um, who you are, where you're from, and how long you've been with Nutrametrics. We'll make this part quick. Great. My name is Jonathan Kirkendall. I've been with um, Nutrametrics, I think, for like six or seven years. Uh, I'm a psychotherapist in Washington, D.C. Renee Carlson, and I am a mental health counselor, play therapist, and a health coach in Victoria, Minnesota, which is just west of Minneapolis. And I've been an owner for two and a half years now. Hi, I'm Val Myers. I'm from Missouri, North Dakota, and I've uh, been in the company. It'll be six years in September. I am Jen Everly. Um, I own Creative Therapy in Valley City, and I've been with Market America for three years in May. We'll start with you, Jen, and we'll go back down. So I want to hear internally first. Since implementing with Nutrametrics, what have been the shifts with your patients, your clients, the families that you work with? Um, how has that shifted since introducing the brand? Well, for me, it really started with when I started getting the education and understanding what's going on with the body. It's like it was training for me and a whole mind shift on how we look at mental health in the body. Like I started asking questions differently and not just looking at mental health as a compartmentalized system like we used to think of it as, like I was um, trained as, uh, but now as it's one system, that everything's working together and you have to understand the whole story, not just one system. I think it's very similar back to when I was trained and as we got patients, that some of the hard patients that we wanted, I have hope for everybody, and I wanted hope for everybody. And as a, sometimes it would be just supporting the parents that we would get with our children or as our patients. And with this, I truly have hope for everybody because now even the hardest of the hard patients, I see changes with. So for me, um, my story was a little different. I actually did my thesis 15 years ago on how chemicals affect the development of children. Thanks, ma'am. <laughs> Um, and so years ago, I felt just really uncomfortable giving kids prescription medications. So I questioned it and I started to research it. And I actually was introduced to Nutrametrics in Market America through Val because she knew how important that belief and passion was for me. And now what I'm noticing is that people are coming to me because they're hearing about what I'm doing and they're hearing, oh, there's another way. And you know they're they're putting the word out there that there's something different that we can do that we can change things to make it better for for who we're working with and have a lifetime of success with something that's going to be easier for everybody to follow versus medications. 
I love this question because you use the word shift, and it really is a shift. Um, about in, in 1999, I became a licensed therapist in Washington D.C., and my supervisor said to me, "I would I, my graduate program was the first graduate program in the United States which looked at the intersection of mindfulness and 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 counseling, right?" My my supervisor in Washington D.C. said to me, "Don't mention the mindfulness part. Everyone's going to think you're just too new age." But now we know there's there's really strong evidence that mindfulness helps with your, your mental health. And now I feel like I'm on the second wave of looking at nutrition and looking at the, the um, how the, the, the mind and the body are one unit. And it's been a real shift for my clients. I'm only now, I, I now get clients who come to me because of that emphasis on working with the body and nutrition. But I have clients who have said to me, can we just talk about my mother? <laughs> and like one client said to me, I don't know why I have all this anxiety. I think it has to do with my father and, and when I was a young kid. And I said, I think it has to do with the diet soda. <laughs> um, so, so I have to train my, the shift is not just people finding me, but me kind of retraining my clients about the direction that, that science is saying can be really helpful for your... So what I say to people is that depression and anxiety are directly impacted by diet and nutrition. And diet and nutrition and exercise can support your body when you're dealing with trauma and your grief. Can I just brag on my friends here for a minute? All four of them have been making a lot of noise, not just in their own practices, but they've been making a lot of noise publicly on the internet. And I say noise in, in the in the best compliment way. Um, if you follow Jonathan on Facebook, he does a minute of mindfulness and a quick, really nice tip that he's been very consistent with on his social media channels. Renee took it upon herself to first of all organize this panel, but also organize all of the mental health therapists that are in this company with a Facebook group where she's very active in posting articles, creating discussion, and I thank her for taking that as an initiative. Val is someone that I tune into on a regular basis. I send people to with her business Facebook page where she will do everything that she does. You know, when we do like wellness 101s, she's doing the same sort of things for her clients and patients and broadcasts everything live on Facebook. So you can hear exactly how she's using these products in her clinic, uh, therapeutically, and all of those great testimonials. And I, I, I featured Jen, if you saw, in one of my Facebook takeover series. But Jen has taken what I did from the nationwide health and wellness online party and created her own. How big is your group right now, Jen? Uh, 1,500 now. 1,500 people she has in her own Facebook group where she goes live once a week in a health and wellness lunch and learn. All four of these people are making noise and people are noticing. So I'm gonna start again with Jonathan and go down the line and just say, so we talked about the shifts internally, but can we talk about the shifts externally? People must be noticing, your, your colleagues, your referral sources, and how are you explaining to them what you're doing in the industry? And as also on franchise owners who are building with our Market America unfranchised system, how are you then introducing them and getting them into the fold of what we're doing here? That's a long question. I'll <laughs> answer <laughs> part of it. Um, I, uh, so for me, um, if I'm talking to another medical professional, I'll, I'll use a couple of buzz, buzzwords. One is um, integrative medicine. So uh, I will tell people that I come um, to mental health with an integrative medicine approach, or functional medicine, or lifestyle medicine. Those are sort of the three buzzwords I use. Many, many of the people that I work with, um, or professionals that I'm around, uh, know those buzzwords, and they go, oh, that's what you're doing. Um, what's really interesting to me is that once I just kind of jumped both feet in and, and offered TLS and talked about um, isotonics, and the DNA gene snip. I have so many people who have who have said, "Oh my God, that, that is 
awesome. I mean, just just lay people, not not like professionals. Because they said that I was in Ohio teaching a mindfulness retreat, and this couple said to me, "Why aren't we local? Like like if we were looking for mental health, this is the type of thing we'd be looking for." So for me, I do a lot of presentations. So I've been going around to school districts because I'm a play therapist and I work with children. And I go and do trainings and staff development. And then I've been going out onto different Facebook groups in my area that are just mental health providers and gaining traction there. So I've just had two more people call me, reach out, and like, what are you doing? I want to know more. Let's meet. And when we meet, um, sometimes when I'm out talking to people, it's interesting the reaction because when I say, you know, we've been healing people just with lifestyle changes and they don't have their symptoms, they're getting their diagnoses changed, removed, and people look at me that have been trained very traditionally from the past and think I'm crazy, and they go, there's no cure for that. And I said, didn't say there was a cure, it's a lifestyle. And so it's definitely this paradigm, mental health paradigm shift is one of my hashtags because it is something that we have to change and um, put our thinking around the whole body. And, you know, as Jonathan mentioned, you know, the next movement now is for people to realize that it is a whole body, your head isn't separate. So wherever I'm at, if I'm at a training, or if I'm out, um, you know, just discussing with people in general. I mean, the other day when I bought my dress for the gala tonight, I'm talking with some lady at the counter, and we get it off, and I'm giving her my card, and she's like, I think my daughter, who's a doctor, would love to talk to you about this. And so you just have to be talking, and get out there, and, and use your voice, and I'm finding a lot of change happening from that, so that's where I begin. I look back when I first went into my clinic, and how many other counselors were like, you should not be doing that. You're not... Uh, trained whatsoever in it and here we are six years later and how different it is uh, you know so when you walk into my practice you get the feel of health and wellness not just through outpatient mental health but through nutrition and diet and genetics and education that's really what it comes down to for the mental health field is education for your colleagues and your patients right so that was kind of my first movement of doing that my next movement has been getting other counselors like Renee and Jen and Tony and Amanda. Uh, I have over probably, I have probably 25 mental health counselors on my team. Uh, and that's because we all know that we've had these patients that we have hope for, but the practices that we were trained to do were not working. And now we are seeing that nutrition and lifestyle does help. And we have had amazing results. Um, so, you know, with my story, I was I was one of those that was a little scared because this is not only a period, when you're involved in a paradigm shift within a career move and you're a brand new counselor. Like I was two years into being a counselor when I heard what Val was doing and I was just like, yes, like that's amazing because to me, being a counselor is, it's not just my job, it's my heart. Like we put our heart and soul into this job and my first ethical code is to do no harm. And so for me, this was a no-brainer. And I feel like a lot of counselors that go into this field, that's the no-brainer to them, is that it is not doing them any harm by teaching children how to eat healthy, teaching parents how to be empowered, to understand symptoms that are happening in their children's body, and to understand what's going on, that it's not that they're being a bad parent, it's that food reacts differently to different people. And once they can understand that shift, like parents will drive I mean, they drive 90 minutes to come see me every single week because of what we offer. And there's other counselors that they could go to that are very conventional. Um, I also had my supervisor, when I was getting licensed, call me into the board because she was so against this. She was like, you have no right to talk about nutrition to children or to families. And I say this because she called me into the board and the board says, we know what they're doing and that's where the industry is going. So she does not, she is not out of her ethical practice. And to me, that was so reassuring. It was scary as hell. But, <laughs> I mean, I was like, oh my gosh, am I going to lose my license here? But um, it was reassuring to me that they already knew because they knew what Val was doing 
Um, and now you see it in um, the trainings that we get um, through our own system. Everybody's looking for non-medication um, options out there. Everybody. And the people who aren't on that shift, they're going to be left behind because that's what the people want. People are sick of their kids taking all these medicines and they want it to stop. And that's why they'll drive hours to find those counselors who are um, who are holistic counselors now or alternative or um, uh, integrative, you know? I mean, they had somebody that was gonna drive three hours just to come see Val because they couldn't find. We are kind of far few in between in North Dakota already, but then it's growing, you know, especially when it comes to the new paradigm shift. So, um, and I think the training in itself, I've gone to some of the non-medication trainings um, that counselors, you know, have. I feel like Nutrametrics is so far ahead of the curve. You almost kind of have to be like, you take it with a grain of salt with what you get in the field because they're still kind of behind versus the stuff we get from Dr. D. I mean, she teaches you about the body. And so you're you're just learning what's going on with the body and this is the science. And so, um, you know, and you figure it out. You figure out like what's really going on with the body and um, Jen, you bring up a, a lot of good points in things that I even heard, and you guys may hear the same thing. That's not within my scope of practice. Um, I can't do that because of ethics and morals. I wouldn't be able to offer a product to my patients because of a confluence of influence. Um, I've heard all of those things. I mean, you touched upon it a little bit in Do No Harm, so I don't know if you have anything else to add, and then we'll hear from our, our other friends. But, you know, how... What are your thoughts about that? And how did you navigate, you know, that this, this is the elephant in the room when it comes to mental health, that moral dilemma? So when I was trained as a counselor, I mean, it's not outrightly shaming counselors to think that, you know, we do this because we want to help people. And so they kind of make it feel like it's bad that you take money for people to help them when they're in a vulnerable state. And so I think it's like this feel like that's taking advantage of somebody. But then you start to really see what the products do. And then your mind shifts and you get that belief in that it's more of an injustice to me to keep this from them. Because if I was a parent, I would want my counselor to give me every single option available before prejudging whether or not I could afford it, whether or not I would like get mad at them for saying something. Um, if I knew my counselor was keeping this from me, I would be more upset about that than somebody saying, you know, you could really, you could, could benefit from some vitamin D. I mean, I, I think if you're going to get upset with that's like, like a heck yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's just the belief. So, so, I actually now teach an ethics class on this very thing because of all the bad feedback that we get that you're stepping out of your, uh, what you should be doing and and that type of stuff. Um, so in my practice, that it is common where uh, that people will say that that you know to the most part. But anyway, so I do a lot of education. There's nothing wrong with educating your patients on what is helping them. Did you know that pycnogenol has studies around it for attention? Did you know omegas has studies around it for attention? Providing all of those resources for your care for your patients. Did you know that a child on the autism spectrum shouldn't have a multivitamin with copper in it? And then they're like, well, where do I get one? You can get one up front, right? In my very own clinic, because I we carry a line of products that are research-based for our patients. Uh, you know, when I help a lot of practitioners uh, with policy within their own practice, and one of the when they come to me and they first say it's an ethical dilemma. I tell them right away, I want you to go read your ethics and then call me because so that they can see for themselves that there's not an ethic in there that they can't do this. So for me, um, I'm a solo practitioner and within that I do it a little bit differently because we're in at um, and I've only been up in my own private practice for two and a half years just expanded thankfully um so we're growing <laughs> but i can definitely make sure that in all of my intake paperwork it's made clear that this is given to you as a convenience and as a resource and as an addition to and it's your choice whether or not you're going to take this um 
or not. So that's first and foremost that it's up front. And sometimes I have people, are is this mandatory? They don't know. But this is an option for you because I know that these things work. Just like Gal said, just that education piece of letting people know how our neurotransmitters and serotonin, um, melatonin are all produced. Um, so first that education piece, and that's why I do a lot of presentations and trainings so that people can hopefully become more aware of all that. Um, so that's kind of where I start. And then, you know, when, when I'm working with patients, it's just like making sure that this is, um, again, just their option. And so they can definitely choose to do it or not to do it. And then, you know, ditto what they said. So, <laughs> but we constantly have people question, you know, well, that's out of your scope of practice, or that's not a one thing that I did do to just learn more and be more educated was to get my health coaching certification. So I went through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, so which Larry Rogowski is also a graduate. <laughs> um, so I did that just because it gives me more information. I learned so much more stuff um, by doing that. But then it also gives me the letters behind the name, basically, which is helpful. So because people do look at you and go, well, you're not a doctor. I'm just going to go talk to my doctor about that. And it's like, well, do you know that they really only get maybe four hours of nutrition education? What? Yeah, so I just want you to know, and it's up to you where you go to get that information, but I'm here when you're ready. I think there are a couple of uh, points. Um, that are important for all of you to think about. One is that every state will have different ethical guidelines. Every single state. So if you are in Mississippi and you email me about a therapist that you talk to, I'm not going to really be able to help you. You need to, you need, and the ethical guidelines are usually online. So you can find, and there are also ethical guidelines for art therapists, licensed professional counselors, which is what I am, uh, psychologists, uh, social workers, clinical social workers. So, so you have to, you know, one thing that you could say is like, bring me your ethical guidelines. Let's look at them together. That would be a useful thing to do. Um, I, I, I graduated from college, you guys, and moved into an anarchist collective and lived there for seven years. When it comes to licensure boards, I'm a little bit like, whatever, I'm kind of doing what I want to do, so I'm a little independent like that, but, but um, I do, I mean, I, I kind of like to fly under the radar, in fact, when we talked about doing this, I got a little nervous, I'm like, oh, what if someone from the D.C. Board of Counseling sees me up there and starts asking me questions, um, so my, my hat's off to you, actually, for going to the, to the, to the board and, and telling them about this. Um, I think that uh, in terms of uh, scope, one like one of the things that I, I say to other therapists who are thinking about this, I say to them, Nutrimetrics has trained me so well. There is nothing that I am telling my clients that is not science-based and, and, and that I don't have articles that I can share. So they're like, are you trained in nutrition? You know what? I say yes. Dr. Nancy Miller Ely lives down the road from me. If I have questions, I pick up the phone and call the very best. Yes. Right? If I have questions when my female clients come in and they're talking about deep depression around their periods, I pick up the phone and call Dr. Dan Lukowski. We have a huge, we have a huge club here of really well-trained health professionals who help each other out. So in terms of scope, I mean, I tell people that's my scope. My very first question when I became a therapist, I was, I was an a intern at the University of Colorado. My very first client sat down and said, how long have you been doing this? <laughs> and I was just saying like, yeah, about five minutes. <laughs> but you know what I said to her? I, I said, oh, my supervisor, is, is Dr. Guy Smith, who's been a psychologist for the past 25 years here at the University of Colorado. And then I said, you're getting me, and you're also getting her experience. So I tell my clients, hey, you have a question, 
Let me call my friend Tina Rose, who's a, who's a nurse practitioner, OBGYN nurse practitioner. I'll get you an answer. I, I depend on this team. And that's great. I got to you right into um, my last question, which is a two-part question. So you, you answered the first part, which is, what is the education that you really appreciate? And so, I mean, I think two things that Jonathan said, and, and this is what I always sell, is the fact that you're part of a community now. You're part of resources. You have this whole network now that you can tap into that's multidisciplinary. I mean, that's what you're going to get from some of the trainings. And that's what Jonathan touched upon. So that's my, my other question is, what sort of resources education-wise do the ladies like to tap into? But the second part of the question, if we can also end on, is your favorite product and why? So Jonathan, if you want to start with favorite product. Okay. Favorite product and why? I, I have two. One is Omega-3 because it's, it is um, it is so good for both anxiety and depression. And then the, the, the uh, daily essentials um, for um, any, yeah, um, I, those like when somebody comes to me and says, "What should I get?" It's those two things that I send them to. So for um, education, of course, obviously, metrics and Market America. We've been learning so much, but as entrepreneurs, I think all of us are people that want to learn, and so. You know, the three of us, we joke around, I'm sure I'm sure Jonathan would too, about how we geek out. We buy all these, like, really science books. And, <laughs> and you know, we're driving in our cars and we're listening to, like, you know, Dirty Jeans by Dr. Ted Lynch and, you know, like, all these different things and um, just keeping our brains active and learning the best and from the best, um, you know, and we're going to be going to, or Val and I are going to be going to the, uh, the mental health integrated mental health conference yeah, in um, uh, September so we just are constantly learning and and not just limiting it to one place as well we have our favorite books you know if you want us to give you some of those you can we, we can just post them or something we should start a book out you guys want to turn into your church book club <laughs> a recent book resource club yeah because there's so many of them um, and for different reasons. So so you just have to keep searching and, and, and buying and educating and reading and coming to all the different Nutrimetrics trainings. Um, and then for my favorite product, um, geez, I don't know, for me, I love the OPC3. I mean, with working with kids and, and ADHD with the pick nodule, that's one of my favorites. Um, and then our liquid omegas, I mean, you can't beat those. So. Delicious. Yeah. I just put that on my salad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's delicious. <laughs> All right. What was the first part again? Education. <laughs> <laughs> All right, education. Um, you know, I, yeah, like Renee said, we do a lot of we do a lot of training, a lot of reading, and uh, you know, and it's not just reading books, but we're actually like I read a lot of studies. Um, you know, uh, and. You know, Dr. D and I, we can just flip things back and forth because she knows that that's what I'm thinking, right? Um, <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, I'm constantly learning, learning things every day. Uh, and as I find a good article, I do flip it out there on Facebook. So if you're not part of the Kids Therapy Center Facebook page, you really should be if this is something that interests you. Uh, I'm not going to do a fancy writing thing. I just put it out there and send it, right? I'm going to maybe have somebody do that someday, but not right now. But anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, basically because I just want to share what I'm learning with so many other people that want to learn very similar things. Uh, but Nutrimetrics, uh, the community, the team, um, it's it's unreal. You know, from Brandy to Sarah to Dee, uh, our thinking is a lot alike from a business perspective to a health perspective to... Uh, wanting what science-based ingredients for our patients. Really, this community gives us hope for everybody that comes to our door and our clinic or just uh, that we interact with. Um, it's, the, it's the best education that you can get. Now for products, I'm going to go on the, the flip side. Everybody knows what I'm going to say proudly, but I'm going to say the DNA digestive enzymes and allergy juice. You know, the gut-brain connection is huge. You want to help somebody's mental health, you help that gut. Right? Get the neurotransmitters working the way that they should and the gut brain connection flowing like it should.
Okay, so education, I would say, um, you know, kind of like what they said, we read a lot of books, and a lot of books that people are like, why are you reading that? Um, <laughs> things about genes, and I mean, but it's really interesting when you can relate to how this is going to help someone. Um, I research a lot, especially on the gene snip with um, the genes that are related to mental health, because I really want to explain that to people so they understand how this can impact them. Um, I ask Val a lot of questions. Um, that's the network and the, um, just the, you know, we need a staff sometimes together and I'll be like, what do you use on these really hard cases? Um, because sometimes you get stuck. Um, so, I mean, it's just kind of a combination of everything and I go to every single product training I can. Like, absolutely. I, I mean, you just, you can't just go to one. You have to go to all of them because everyone gives you a little bit different snippet of some type of information. So, um, and even if it's not mental health related, you you know, some of us have, I work with adults too, and your your patient might have um, fibromyalgia. Well, how's that impacting their depression? Huge. I mean, how is that impacting their anxiety or their ability to sleep, which then impacts their mental health? So again, it's all one system, and you have to know a little bit about everything to really understand what's going on with your clients. Um, I would say my favorite product, um, of course, everything they, they um, talked about is amazing. Mine is um, the DNA Miracles Multi Plus, Multivitamin Plus. I mean, I have had people, I've given those in like the little sample bottles, um, which lasts about, you know, 10 days if it's one cap. Um, I've given those to people if, you know, money was tight and they just didn't know if this was going to work. Um, we have had people drive 40 miles back the next day because they see results so quickly with that formulation. Um, and they know when they run out, they will drive to my office. It doesn't matter how far away they live to get a bottle because we always have it in stock. Um, because that has changed kids' lives. It has gotten kids off medication. I mean, it is phenomenal. So, yeah, pretty major. I just want to thank them so much for their time. Thank you for being for the suggestions. Um, I do also want to say that unless you came here already a patient of one of these four providers, they are not going to treat, diagnose, give you a quick mental checkup while you're here. Please do not ask them that. Please do not come up and say, you know, my best friend's daughter's best friend has ADD. Like, what regimen would you put her on? That's not within their scope of practice to go ahead on the concourse and give you a free treatment. Um, absolutely follow them on social media, though. One more time, thank them for their time. Yeah.